Okay, I wanted to, before it got put away, um, get the stuff fixed on the mower that needs fixed, which all I need to do is put the new pitman arm on it, but it bugs me when I know stuff is broke and I don't want to put it away broke, so we got time for a minute here. Just get it fixed and get it over with. So I got, we got to get the pitman arm off. Yeah, we need this piece. Luckily it didn't lose the spring when it, when it broke. And then this is the new pitman arm, which I'm not 100% sure that this isn't, I don't think this is actually new old stock. I think this thing might have been used at one point because there's no paint there like it had an end on it. I don't know, I'm just not thoroughly convinced. And then I'm also, I also don't fully understand how you get, unless they'll flex that much and you can rock it in, I don't know how you get those cones because they're they're welded to the tabs there's matching sockets in that drive bearing right there i don't know i don't know how that works but regardless i'm going to grind the rivets off of this and replace them with bolts because i think that's part of i think my problem here was twofold i think the bar breaking was because if anybody remembers last last summer when I was taking second cutting off of Shelly's mom's, right when I pulled in the field and started, I caught that hunk of rebar um, with the knife. And uh, actually I did it twice because the first time I couldn't find it. And then the second time I found it. Um, I think that's probably why the sickle broke. And then it probably started the pitman arm, maybe. But I'm thinking the pitman arm broke because I'm betting that over time that wood shrank a little bit and allowed them rivets to get loose and they started working um and led to this situation so the other thing i need to do is get a length measurement off of this guy um that way i can see if there is a brand new not that it would be hard to just recreate this but it'd be nice to find a brand new blank made out of fresh wood that's not going to be dry um, so anyhow, that's what we got going on. Okay. So you got two ways you can take this off, depending on how far in you got to go. If you pop this cap off, there's a C-clip or actually it's heavier than a C-clip. It's an Eaton ring that holds that bearing assembly on. Um, cause this is a shimmed, which it could probably actually stand to have a shim or two added, take up some of that slop. But uh, anyhow, or you do what I did and you take that bolt loose and I'll have to loosen these guys here. And then you can, of course that obviously doesn't work with the rivets, which I still don't understand how, unless there's, like I say, unless there's enough flex here, but then you'd have to have a way to hold this thing. You'd almost have to take it off, put it in a vise where you could start one cone and then rock it and snap it over but i feel like that would be hard on the rivets and I, I i don't i don't know it wouldn't be my preferred method of removal that being said i also didn't look at the book to see if they tell you if they give you a um, procedure for removal and replacement of the pit arm Another thing that I've wondered, you know, when you get a tractor, you've got an operator's manual, which gives you like the basic, um, like how to change the oil, check the oil, check all the fluids, how to set spark plugs, you know, your, your general maintenance, but it doesn't really tell you how to work on it. I wonder if for the implements, you know, because you got a track, you got the operator's manual, and you got an actual shop manual for the tractors. I wonder if the implements ever had shot like dealer only 
tech manuals for them. That'd be an interesting thing to know. Of course, that being said, I guess if they did, Floyd County Museum would probably have them in the archives, and they don't, so maybe that answers that question. You got that and you can't just get it off so I don't know what they expect you to do but I'm just gonna take these guys loose okay so that's obviously junk it's not even worth keeping for a pattern well, I mean it, you could use those holes but there's no there's nothing down here but these guys are worth keeping, although they're warm, so I'm not going to use them. We'll use these since because these are, in theory, new, if this is indeed a brand new Pittman arm. But like I say, we're going to grind these rivets off, and then while I got them off, I will wire wheel the rust off of these cones. That way they don't chew up that bearing, and then we'll put it back together with bolts. Okay, we're all ready to go back together. These are cleaned up. The drive head's ready to go back on. So now for the fun part is wrestling this menagerie of crap back together. I'm guessing when it was new, they had a tool for this part. Actually, you might get lucky. Okay, can we do this? If we can get it down. You just got to get one bolt in, and then after that, except I want it this. See, it's going to go in the mower. Like this. Actually, I want this back here. Right? Yeah, because it's going to go in that way so this is going to be facing out so yeah i don't want the nuts on the back side because there's nothing up here for them to hit theoretically they shouldn't hit anything back here but there is a frame member right here rather close so if we can avoid clearance issues with that best to do it Okay, and then, actually, we're just going to put a nut on here for a minute till we get everything going here. <laughs> actually, screw it. Let's, let's go ahead. So, I'm going to put a nylock nut, a lock washer, and blue Loctite just to, like, triple down on making sure that these things don't... cause an issue by working their way loose.
I had bolts on these on the other arm when I fixed it last week. And I cut seven acres with it that way with no Loctite and just nylock nuts and mop washers. And there was zero sign of them trying to work loose. So I trust that with the Loctite, we should have no problems whatsoever. Okay, there's that side, and then we can start this side. And just so they're easier to see, I am actually going to put this side together with the nuts facing up, just because they're going to be easier to see. this side we have to leave loose so that we can get those cones slid back in where they belong and then this side goes back together on the mower okay it's probably not necessarily a requirement but I am going to dab some grease in these guys because you do leave this slightly loose so that the the pitman arm can um, has some leeway forwards and backwards or well you know what I mean it's got the ability to to swing a little. nylocks do prove to be an issue I'll probably go ahead and get stover nuts for it which is what I would have preferred to begin with but there weren't any here so this is what I used and it seemed to work so we're gonna roll with it for the time being and then our last Step here is to slide the knife back in. Which is always the fun part. Mostly because of the angle you've got to do it at. Don't mind 
me. Shazam. Okay. So that takes care of the mower. You can see here why I wanted to make sure. Actually, if the nuts were on the back side, there probably would be some clearance issues. But that's why I wanted the bolts in there that way. Over there, it doesn't really matter. I put them up, one, so they're easier to get at, and two, they're less likely to catch hay than if they were facing down. So... My old homemade lift arm or lift point right there still holding up good. Hasn't broke yet. Well, of course, it wouldn't break that stronger than the original one that was on it, but you know what I mean. So, this part's done. Um, and I, ha I got parts so that we can put a second bar together. I'm just going to run this, just keep running this one until that knife back breaks again. And then when it breaks again, we'll we'll throw it out. But it's there, it's assembled. Might as well run it till it breaks. So I kind of want to see, and it, it won't probably happen anytime soon. But it's something that was in the back of my head while I was putting that uh, crary cutter bar on that grain head last year. What? Um, Crary does make conversion kits for hay mowers. Obviously, they wouldn't, they, they, they never would have a kit of just a, a bolt on kit available for this dinosaur, but they do have the, the part, the parts for a hay style cutting setup. And I thought about getting all the parts together to put Crary piece or Crary parts on this if bolt pattern and all that stuff works out but that's that's way way out not even like on the radar it's just a, a thought so let's get that bar done and then we'll be done with this project for the season <laughs>
I'm just about done with that bar. I got all the bolts driven in. We just got to bolt all the sickles on. But I figured before I run completely out of daylight, we need to get that mower unhooked in the 77 put away. I'm always worried about running these things home with a impact driver because I'm worried you're going to over tighten them just enough and then they'll you'll either going to snap them off while you're tightening them or they're going to snap off while you're running it. So even though it's the slower way, these things I've always just put on with a ratchet just for peace of mind. spare bar made up so now if I break one again we don't got to do a Chinese fire drill to try to get going just pull a broken one out and throw this one in and and I still got one more spare that uh, we can convert over if need be so 
But that takes care of the mower maintenance. It's off the tractor, back in its spot for the winter. So scratch one more project off the list. So next step will be going over the grain trucks. So that's probably going to be the tomorrow's project. So that's it for this one. I'll catch you guys on the next one.